our name on our hands, you are going to get to drink from absolute abomination. You want pain. You want suffering. You want judgment. You want hell. You want degradation. The gates are now being opened. Everything that America wants dearly in their satanic heart, they will now get. The abomination churches worshiping global government, worshiping tyranny, telling their flocks to lay down under homeland security, cybersecurity training to tell their flocks to take the injections and go to the FEMA camps. Everything you want is now materializing. Everything you desire you, because you hate yourselves deep down and you want to be punished and you will be. Continuing, as Egypt goes offline, U.S. gets internet kill switch bill ready. The Russians got to sup from the cup of death. The Germans got to sup. The, the Cambodians got to sup. The Iraqis have got to sup with the banks that run our country funding them. And now you will get to sup. You want to sit down at this, at this bloody orgy? You want to sit down at this... At this, at this table laid bare with the futures of our children and literally eat their souls as your soul has been trafficked and sold to the old serpent. If you don't repent now and hit your afterburners to warn everybody and wake up and hit your knees and wear sackcloth and pour ashes over yourself, you are going to be gobbled up. You just watch. You want satanic government? You got it. We'll be right back. Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are here live. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, I'm not trying to be negative, but Hitler killing tens of millions, Stalin killing tens of millions, Lenin killing tens of millions, Mao, Pol Pot, the list goes on and on. Think about Stalin killing conservatively 35 million people. Uh, conservatively 60 million under Mao. And our government, our so-called government, is now on record admitting they helped put Mao into power. And David Rockefeller and all these other globalists write articles and books about how great he was and how we need that system. Think of a million dead. That's 10 sports stadiums with 100,000 each. Men, women, children, little babies killed. Think of 64 million, that's the conservative estimate that Mao killed. 64 million murdered. Now, if that isn't black cup of abomination, if that isn't total degradation, think about 51 million people dead. How many sports stadiums is that? How many sports stadiums filled with 100,000 people is 51 million? That's how many babies didn't get to get born in America. So see, all this death goes on around us. And so we're shocked when tyranny starts rearing its head. We're shocked that the federal government would sign secret deals 11 years ago to begin stealing the death benefits of U.S. troops as they die. Of course they're going to get away with that. If they can steal tens of trillions of dollars and then Congress says, where's the money going, Federal Reserve? And they say, we're not going to tell you. And the former Fed head goes on Lair News Hour and says, we're above the law. Nobody can touch us or investigate us because they say so, because they're wearing a suit. Is there nothing we won't put up with? Is there no level of humiliation? My words can't describe what's been set up. The banks that have run the world for the last 70 years conservatively, have funded dictators, have funded wars, have funded both sides of conflicts, and they're bringing a hellish system in. And then they admit all over the news that these big financial interests that run our country are overthrowing Hazi Mubarak to bring in another guy involved in torture and corruption? Another guy involved in all of this persecution? They got rid of Saddam and brought in more tyranny. It's actually accelerated now that Saddam Hussein is gone. They want it to be bad. They want to destroy these countries. They want you on your belly starving. They want you and myself and everybody else dead. That's their end game. They want us gone. They've bought up the world through fraud, and they are tired of looking at us. I want to go to this clip and then go to break and come back. Uh, but uh, this is a big Brzezinski on ABC News uh, last night. Openly 
saying that he wants Hazi Mubarak to step down. Now, here's the Brzezinski model. This is one of the architects of these type of color revolutions against the globalist own ally, Hazi Mubarak. Here it is. We're joined now by a man who has helped navigate U.S. foreign policy way back during the Iranian revolution. He is Vigniev Brzezinski, who used to be President Carter's national security advisor, joins us now. Thank you for being with us. I want to start by asking you, does Mubarak have to go, or, as the administration seems to hope, he can implement enough reforms to get through this moment? Is that realistic? I don't think that's realistic. What could be a realistic is that Mubarak himself becomes convinced with outside advice that it is in his interest as well as in Egypt's interest that he goes and that he sets in motion a process which facilitates that. I think the alternatives otherwise are much tougher. Either the army cracks down and the populace increasingly turns to fundamentalism, radicalism in reaction to the crackdown or the regime perpetuates itself and an explosion comes later and even more violent. Okay. And it goes on from there. Notice how they fed the sounds of rioting and chanting. That reminds me of Chicago last week said to make everybody happier, they're going to put up broadcasting towers that play the sound of tweeting and singing and chirping birds. See, the mindset is we're creatures in a laboratory. We're creatures on a slide in a Petri dish. And there are the social engineers manipulating us. But exactly as I said Sunday, once they began to admit that they were orchestrating this, the globalists, that they knew that there was a trigger coming for true freedom in Egypt. And so they sent their globalist stooge in with money and backing to go ahead and overthrow their old apprentice, their old puppet out, Count Dooku or Hazi Mubarak, and they're going to replace him with Darth Vader, Muhammad El Baradi. If you want to use a Star Wars analogy, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Devastating globalist lies, exposing the mainstream media's propaganda machine, tirelessly waging war on corruption. From deep in the heart of FEMA Region 6 in Austin, Texas, transmitting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. We see the earth from here. It's a private banking cartel playing nations, races, religions off against each other. They then pose as the arbiter or the referee and the financiers to fix the crises that they create or that they energize. And so by Saturday and then by Sunday, it, beca it began to become completely, absolutely clear that the establishment knew that Egypt was on the edge of revolt because the IMF and World Bank in the last year had ordered them to institute austerity measures right at half their population, making under $2 a day. Many of their people starving or malnourished. The UN coming in saying they'd give them more money if they engaged in sterilization and abortion. That's been a big fight. And Hazi Mubarak could not, even though he's a dictator, he could not force that on the Egyptians. So the globalists have blocked Egypt from industrializing, which would have caused them to stop having as many children that the globalists think is so dangerous. And so while blocking their development, which then triggers larger populations in every case, then they come in and demand that uh, the abortion and the other eugenics operations be carried out. And that's clearly one of the main reasons the U.N. has been critical of the regime uh, in their 20 years of demands that they get busy killing their people like China has done. So extremely serious uh, situation there. And so they know that the people were about to rebel and take their nation back. That scene is radical. Can't actually have a Middle Eastern country uh, run by the people. And so in comes uh, this Mohammed el Baradi, top globalist, top UN minion, top eugenicist uh, to carry out that operation. 
but then the U.S. has to tacitly approve of Hosni Mubarak so the population doesn't wake up to what's happening and actually give Mubarak support once they realize that that's the dictator now out of favor with the New World Order. And, and undoubtedly, what they're about to get is going to be a lot worse. So the globalists put gas on the fire, fuel on the fire, accelerant on the blaze by making them cut the food allowances that, again, right at half the population is surviving on. And so you see millions of uh, very lean people on the verge of starvation, uh, malnutrition epidemic, hitting the streets for food. And don't worry, the man on the white horse arrives. Muhammad el Baradi, he will save you. And the Muslim Brotherhood that I hear neocons talking about being radical Muslims that want to get us, admittedly run by British, Israeli, and U.S. intelligence, trying now to overthrow Saudi Arabia. Openly the head of the Muslim Brotherhood saying they're going to overthrow Jordan, the big ally. Because they don't want Jordan with factories and hotels and fighter jets and uh, friendly uh, royalty and an elite wearing Armani suits and uh, you know women sipping Coca Cola on the on the street corners uh, at the cafes. They want them like Iraq, truck bombings, guys running around with you know hoods on their heads, uh, screaming Allah Akbar, blowing up Shiites and uh, Sunnis, killing each other. The grand chessboard. Destruction. You cannot serve the new world order. You cannot lick their boots and have them leave you alone. Anyone who can stand, anyone who can tie their shoelaces is an enemy of the new world order, including America. We're taught to have this lustful hate of the Muslims while Western governments bring them in as fast as they can. While the tax-free foundations, Carnegie, Rockefeller, uh, and other endowments, Ford, fund the radical Muslims, fund the liberation theology, fund the jihad, fund the takeover in the prisons, uh, which are giant uh, education centers for the Muslims to take over. They are creating that foreign enemy and then offering their solution. Just as they fund the Hispanic liberation, the black liberation, just as the FBI has been caught in the Southern Poverty Law Center and others running and infiltrating and, and, and controlling the white supremacist. And that's why the white supremacist, whether they know it or not, some of them are useful idiots at the bottom, hate this show so much because I call them out when it constantly gets revealed in lawsuits and court hearings that – in every case, the commanders, the leaders of the Aryan nations, the commanders, the leaders of the white supremacist, of the Klan, uh, of the Elohim city, uh, of these marches through minority areas of cities, they're not infiltrated by feds. They are run by feds to make us fight with each other. Mecha, La Raza, Ku Klux Klan, Aryan Nations, Hal Turner, all of it to get us at each other's throats while the new world order brings in its tyranny. It's called balkanization, divide and conquer. Now, I listened to local radio this morning, local AM. Then I listened to local FM. Then I listened to national AM. Uh, then I checked the news listings for about three hours, scanning back and forth. And I heard this big demonization uh, of Hosni Mubarak because he did an Internet kill switch and shut the web off. And certainly, I mean, what do you think a dictator now in his Hitlerian bunker, as Der Spiegel points out, uh, surrounded on all sides, what do you think he's going to do? But none of them want to talk about the Internet kill switch our government has already constructed and has already built. As Egypt goes offline, U.S. gets Internet kill switch. Bill ready. The Age, Sydney Morning Herald. Um, for some reason, the Australians are big on this. Uh, PC World, they're all reporting on it. Oh, but I don't hear those talk show hosts crying out against that. In fact, a lot of conservatives agree we need this because of Al-Qaeda, yes. And then they launch an attack on the web, say Al-Qaeda did it, shut the web down for a time. And when they roll out the new web, it's got all the controls in place that are already there. A nice false flag.